uh, it's nice to have some positive messages <laughs> against such a huge problem. So our next speaker is Professor John Wenger, who's here, sneaking up on me. <laughs> so, um, um, so John, we look, look forward to hearing about you and the air that we breathe. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, thanks to the organizers for the invitation to speak here today. I'm going to talk about air quality and um, some of the work that we've uh, performed in our Center for Research into Atmospheric Chemistry at UCC. For many years now, the European Environment Agency has stated that air pollution is the single largest environmental health risk in Europe and has significant impacts on the health of the European population, particularly in urban areas. Based on measurements, we can estimate the number of premature deaths occurring across Europe and across the 41 countries in 2019. That was a 440,000 premature deaths, of which 1,300 were in Ireland. So the main pollutants that are of concern in Ireland really are particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide. There are others that are present in the chart here, and they, they do, come, do come from a range of sources. But research over the last few decades has really helped us to pin those down. We know that particulate matter can be produced by traffic and other sources, but residential solid fuel burning is a particular problem in winter months. We know that NO2 is mainly emitted by traffic and is a big problem in the urban areas. And so these give rise to local air pollution effects, very much in cities and towns. But let's not, let's, let's, let's not forget the role of agriculture because we have large emissions of ammonia, volatile organic compounds, and NOx also from agriculture, which contribute to regional pollution. Okay, so we shouldn't forget agriculture in there as well. The problem pollutant really is, is particulate matter. And it, it, it accounts for over 90% of the deaths. And it's classified by size. You may be familiar with this. Um, the particles are small, invisible. They can be breathed into the respiratory system if they're 10 micrometers or less. And that's why they're called PM10. If we have even smaller particles, 2.5 micrometers in diameter, they can actually penetrate deeper into the respiratory system and go into the lungs. And there's a greater health risk, therefore, associated with exposure to these smaller particles. So PM2.5 is the key metric uh, for health. And in terms of the impact, well, in short-term exposure, we know about respiratory and cardiovascular mobility, such as heart attack and asthma. On a long-term basis, uh, we know that eventually it can lead to premature deaths from cardiovascular respiratory diseases and things like lung cancer. Latest research, and it was alluded to earlier this morning, is, is that tiny airborne particles can actually go through the whole body now. All right? So particles that are ultra-fine in size, less than 100 nanometers, can, can get around the whole body. And here's two recent reports. Air pollution particles found in mother's placentas, so babies in the womb could be exposed to air pollution. And also young children uh, were finding air pollution in their brains, and this may affect their neurodevelopment and lead to more serious health effects like Alzheimer's in later life. And so there's also concern that now air pollution does affect the whole body, not just the lungs and the heart. And of course, that's the reason why we're monitoring, and the EPA have now in place quite a large network of monitoring stations around the country. It's around about 100 um, and they measure at many locations, many cities, and towns, and some background locations. And they produce this annual report uh, on the state of the air quality. And they look to see how, in the main, Ireland is in compliance with EU, and also how we shape up in terms of responding or addressing the WHO air quality guidelines. If we look at performance in Ireland in 2021, uh, and compare it to the World Health uh, Organization air quality guidelines, which were recently adjusted in 2021, what we see is that we're not hitting the grade in PM2.5 and NO2 especially. Okay? And so at the, many of the stations were not hitting those air uh, quality guideline values, which the EPA have set out as their target. And it's, a, as a, it's part of their ambition. So how can we reduce PM2.5 if this is the problem pollutant? Well, obviously, first of all, we need to conduct research into identify and hopefully quantify the different sources and then introduce policies to reduce emissions from these sources. 
So we've been looking at this activity for the last 15 years or so in Cork. And our first study was in Cork City, way back, um, 2008, 2009. And we were able to identify different sources based upon the chemical composition of the particles. And we found that we could pick out traffic particles and we could pick out solid fuel burning particles as well. And then we have a, a range of other local and regional sources. The key point from these figures here is that in the winter months, PM 2.5 is almost doubled on average compared to summer. And that 50% of that was due to solid fuel burning. And this is important, why? Because this was a city that already had the ban on smoky coal in place, all right? So this was a, a supposedly legislation to minimize air pollution was already in place. So uh, we thought oh, there's obviously a, a question to be asked here, the burning question, what is the contribution of residential solid fuel burning to air pollution levels in towns where the ban on smoky coal is not in place? Okay. And furthermore, what's the contribution of each fuel type? Ireland is quite unique in that we have a, a mix of solid fuels, coal, peat, and wood. And so what is the contribution of each fuel type? Uh, and this led to a project called Sapphire, which is source apportionment of particulate matter in urban and rural areas of Ireland conducted a, a little while ago now, funded by the EPA, and the report is available online if you want to check it out. We decided to monitor in several locations. We picked towns that were outside of the smoky coal ban area. That means at that time, towns less than 15,000, that would have no natural gas supply and therefore have a higher usage of solid fuels for home heating. And we went during winter time to get the uh, peak pollution events and we went to Killarney in County Kerry, Enniscorthy in Wexford, and also Burr County, Offaly. And here's some data from Enniscorthy. Um, uh, we have PM 2.5 mass concentration here for about 40 days in, in the winter period. And what we see is that the average levels of PM 2.5 are 29 micrograms per meter cubed. So just to put that in, into perspective, the background average level is about 5. Okay, so we're seeing average levels way above the background level. We're also seeing a very high range. We get some very polluted events. You can see some massive spikes here with large pollution events being observed. Um, and in fact, virtually every single evening, there was a very high level of air pollution. So we had a very localized effect during a very short time period as well. And when we analyzed the data and compared it to the air quality guideline values at the time, the world 24-hour uh, mean value was exceeded on 42% of those days. Okay? Given the new air quality guideline values, it would be even worse. Okay? What we were able to do is to look at the chemical composition of the particles and break it down into sources. And here is an average 24-hour profile for Enniscorthy um, for that monitoring period. And, and you can see... Just look at the overall shape there. We've got a massive um, increase in pollution uh, during the winter, during the evenings, about six, seven, eight o'clock. Okay, sustained through the evening, and it's because of people are burning uh, solid fuels for home heating. Uh, and when you break down the composition into different sources, we see that peat is actually the dominant source, more so than wood, more so than coal. Um, and we do see a small bit of uh, contribution from ammonium as well, which comes from agricultural emissions. Overall, 82% of PM2.5 was due to residential solid fuel burning. In the Sapphire project we measured in Burr and Killarney, we got very similar results. Again, showing that peat was more dominant than wood and coal. Building on our, on our first work in Cork and also colleagues from the University of Galway, doing measurements in Galway and with us in Dublin, we're able to show that during winter months, 50 to 85% of PM2.5 is due to solid fuel burning in these locations. That peat is always uh, a larger contributor than wood and coal, and that the smaller towns, in fact, have worse air pollution than the big cities in many cases. And so there are implications for policy because at that time, the standard, the, the expected introduction of a nationwide balanced smoky coal uh, was proposed at several points during the last decade or so. Um, but finally, our research would show that initial policy to reduce emissions from all solid fuels 
would be more successful in, in improving air quality. And it was good to see that taken on board in the solid fuel regulations that were published uh, late last year. And the focus is on commercial sale of smoky fuels, including smoky coal, turf, and wet wood. So it's not just a response to coal, it's all solid fuels. Just another question that we've been asking recently is, are we getting the full picture? Yes, we have 100 monitoring stations around the country. Um, these are network measurements, and they use very accurate reference methods. Um, here's some instruments here, and you can see they're going to be quite sophisticated, and they generate high-quality data for compliance purposes, but they cover at a high cost, 20, 30, 40,000 euro each. So it's expensive to do air quality monitoring. Um, but they cannot be realistically deployed in every town and city. Now, we can fill in the gaps using some sort of air quality modeling, but we've also been looking at using lower cost sensors. Okay, so these are small devices that may only cost a few hundred euro, um, and, and they can be just deployed at different locations outdoors. Uh, and you can see from the pictures here, we have on the bottom a deployment of a sensor at a school, and also at the top, a deployment of another sensor on a lamppost, which is uh, solar powered. Okay, um, so the important thing about these is that they're not used for compliance purposes, they only provide indicative values. But being low cost, they can be widely distributed and used in a network to generate a more detailed map of air quality. Uh, and they have been used now by local authorities, citizen science, and community level air quality monitoring projects around the world. So working with Cork City Council, we set up Ireland's first low-cost air quality monitoring network. We had 16 sensors located around the city, going from west to east and north to south. And measurements are made continuously, and these are actually reported uh, live to the public. And we analyzed the data that was collected during 2021. So first of all, we calibrated the sensors by co-location uh, with reference instruments. We got calibration factors. Uh, and then we got some really nice data here from the winter. This is from December 2021. And you've got the average 24-hour profile, not too dissimilar from an Escorthy, but the levels are way less. But what we're able to see is that different areas of the city, although they follow the same shape, they have different amounts of pollution. So in the west, where you're getting the southwesterlies coming in, the cleaner air, the pollution is a lot less than the east of the city or even the north of the city as well. Uh, and you can see that also the very top curve is actually from the commuter towns, Blarney and Ballincollig. Um, and so they uh, are obviously large, uh, they, they have uh, wintertime air pollution events very much so, uh, even more so than the cities. Currently, the largest air quality uh, sensor network in, in Ireland has been operated in Dungarvan. We're working with Waterford City Council here as part of a Life Emerald project, um, which is focusing on developing an air quality forecast model. And these sensors are being deployed all around the town and being used to help validate the models that are used to provide the forecast. So that's something that we're really quite excited about because it will have a, a definite purpose uh, for the EPA and expect air quality forecasts on your TV and radio uh, in the coming years. So just to bring it to a close, the summary really is that the main sources of air pollution in Ireland are solid fuel burning, especially during winter months, obviously, traffic and agriculture, and both of those are year-round activities. Um, reductions in PM2.5 will provide the largest benefits for public health um, and help to create a healthy environment for all. And let's not forget that reducing emissions from solid fuel burning and traffic will also benefit climate. So in a way, Switching to renewable, clean energy sources, especially for home heating, will be a win-win-win scenario for air quality, health, and climate. And of course, that's the cornerstone of the recently published Clean Air Strategy for Ireland. And um, implementation of the, uh, that strategy, I think, will be really important for us going forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, John.